challenging legacies was looking at Iraq and Gertrude Bell together, so it wasn't just a, a celebration of Gertrude Bell as a person. We had an exhibition in 2016 called The Extraordinary Gertrude Bell, which certainly held Gertrude Bell up as a pioneering archaeologist and an explorer, which she absolutely was. But we also wanted to look at the more nuanced side and perhaps the less positive side of her legacy, particularly when it came to Iraq. Gertrude Bell was born in the northeast of England. She was born in Washington. She grew up in Redcar. She was the granddaughter of Isaac Lothian Bell, who was a famous ironmaster. Gertrude was educated at home and then latterly in London and at Oxford. And so she benefited from that family wealth. And it was her father particularly who funded her expeditions. Her uncle, uh, Frank Lassels, was the British ambassador to Persia at one time, and, and he lived in Tehran. And she went to visit him, and that was her first kind of foray into the Middle East. When the First World War broke out, she initially was working uh, tracing the missing and wounded um, with the Red Cross in France and in London. But the British government kind of realised that she had this really unique knowledge and insight because she had gone places that not many Westerners had gone. And she was recruited to join the Arab Bureau doing kind of some administrative tasks, but also a lot of diplomatic tasks. After the First World War, she stayed in Iraq. She um, worked very closely with the person who would become the king of Iraq, Faisal I, once the king was crowned and everything was a little bit more settled down. She opened the Baghdad Museum. Gertrude Bell died in 1926, and just a few months after she died, her half-sister, Elsa Richmond, gave um, a significant part of the archive that we have now to Newcastle University. Our Gertrude Bell archive is really the, the, the jewel in our special collections. It's our UNESCO archive. It's a treasure trove, really. The exhibition came from originally the, the centenary of the Kingdom of Iraq, so that, that was established in 1921. We've re-digitised the whole of the archive and we've, we've re-described the whole of the archive so it's, it's more discoverable and, and, and the, the actual curation is better quality. I think we have a mixture of everything. Most of the material is books, uh, manuscript material, so her diaries and letters. There's also official documents, uh, some of which she, I suppose, collected, read, like bought. But there's also Bell's own documents, because when she worked for the Arab Bureau, um, she wrote reports, uh, like intelligence reports. So some people say she was a spy. And of course, we wanted to use as many of her pictures as we could, um, especially the ones that show the, the people of Iraq that, that she met with, um, that she encountered. I don't know if it's my favourite, but one of the things that I think is really cool about the archive is the albums. So we have one album open and one album closed. It looks very like a period piece. It looks quite old fashioned and on the inside is all her pictures, but she's annotated some of them. She's written captions and sometimes she's taken like three photographs, slightly different angles, and then she's pasted them to make a panorama. My favourite object as an archivist is the trunk that's behind us here. So this is the trunk that Gertrude Bell's archive came to us, the, the university, in in the 1920s. Being able to see this as an artifact in the center of the exhibition is incredibly exciting to think about her family packaging up her life, life's work in this trunk. The original negatives were, were stored in a tin trunk in the explosives bunker of the chemistry labs. I used to, as a student, go into this bunker and open up the trunk and they were all in little envelopes in alphabetical order, so it was quite easy to find them, but I used to pull out those negatives. I was always worried about not the negatives blowing up, but all the other things that had been relegated to the explosives bunker. The title Challenging Legacies, I think, picks up on many different aspects of Gertrude Bell's life and the work that she did and, and the results of that work. Some people, have a great affection for Gertrude Bell. Um, others are much more critical of her. She had so many advantages in life. She had the opportunity to travel and to engage with people at a very high level. She met the Viceroy of India. She worked with Winston Churchill in 1921 at the Cairo Conference. And yet 
she still didn't want women to have the vote. That can be quite surprising for people to hear. Other things that were controversial are some of the decisions she made in Mesopotamia about the nature of the future state of Iraq are controversial for, for, for many of the people today. As part of our push and impetus to redress the balance of the story, focusing on Iraq and the people and the real ramifications of what happened and how it, was, how it affected people, we tried to involve as many Iraqi colleagues as we could. One of our colleagues, Jafar Jotheri, has been working um, and taking videos in Iraq. One of the videos I most like is the one that records the views of the man who looks after Gertrude Bell's grave. I really hope that audiences get a sense of who Gertrude Bell was, what Iraq was like at that time, but I also hope that they kind of come to their own conclusions, really. I think it's really important that people know about Gertrude Bell. She's a really important person in this part of the world, in the northeast of England, but also that we understand better our modern world and where it's come from, and that we understand that, that the creation of the modern world, complex as it is today, has a complex um, history, and that we want to engage lots of different kinds of people in talking about that.